All right, let's get this show on the road. Close this. Uh, all right. Welcome, welcome to Dave's Arcade. I'm Dave. Oh, back at it. Um, yeah, I did a little stream yesterday setting up for the Buffalo stream, which I think went pretty well. Streamed uh, Sea Witch last night. Uh, Max blew it up. We got, what is that? 300 mil something or other. Killed my high score, so that was awesome. Uh, I played okay. I had a couple good games in there. But anyway, I was uh, on vacation, not last week, but the week before. And so I didn't stream then. And then last week was the week of Midwest Gaming Classic. And I had to catch up on all the work that I didn't do while I was on vacation. Um, so... I tried to set up coverage, but it just didn't work out. Um, but it's okay. I had it all knocked out and caught up in like, I don't know, three quarters of a day. So, not too terrible. The world did not fall apart. The pinball world did not fall apart as far as American is concerned. Um, okay. So. Solar fire play field. I need to get cracking on this thing. And the, where I left off was I was kind of finishing up some inserts, which I showed um, more up top. And I showed the method of using a circle template that you can get at any craft store. I think I saw that recently on Facebook. Somebody was like, uh, they airbrushed an EM and they they had uh, masked off all the inserts so they painted over all the key lines I'm like well what do I use to paint these back and the circle template is your best bet anyway um, so that's that's all just black and uh, I use I like to use folk art licorice black um, it has really good opacity and um, it's much better than like, like this is a really cheap black that honestly it probably won't match if you go to the craft store and get like Apple Barrel or this Delta whatever cheap stuff. It, it doesn't work the greatest. Anyway, so Moving on to, I attempted to do some color matching on a spot here. All right. Yeah, I can move this around. But I feel like the red is just a little bit off. And I need to grab a rag here. Okay. So, as I've talked about before, um, naphtha is your friend on this. You'll need this for color matching. Let me zoom or focus here. Right about there. Okay. Um, so the reason you want to use naphtha is all of your paint that comes from craft store, or almost all of it, is going to be a matte finish, and uh, I think very few are going to be sold as a gloss. Anyway, um, which is fine, but this is the technique to kind of check your work when you're color matching is to put some naphtha on a rag and then you want to wipe over that spot to kind of look at what does it look like when it has gloss over it 
because ultimately you're going to be sealing this color in with something, right? Whether it be a, a clear coat or a polyurethane or whatever. So um, I feel like the red that I picked last time, this true red straight out of the bottle, was a bit um, too bright. And so I'm going to try try to find something a little bit closer. And what I'm going to do, rather than using this area to match the color, I'm going to actually move over here and use this spot. So that previous spot that we were looking at, um, it's actually a mixture of this purple um, and then this red and it uses like so the background color is red and then they use like a bunch of um, I don't, they're not dots but like kind of squiggly lines of this purple over top and then so it kind of gives the illusion of a of a different color usage so that that can happen in pinball all the time let me focus a little bit better uh, enough okay so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try since I've already tried this true red from Americana I have a whole bunch of reds in my art cart over here but I'm gonna try this bright red which is coincidentally a little bit darker than what um, the name suggests. So I'm going to put this on. Well, I'm just going to do a little dab of that. And as I covered last time, um, you always want to thin out playfield paints. Um, some are th like this apple barrel stuff is thinner than. Um, say a folk art. Folk art will come out more in like a paste. Um, but still, they all need to be thinned out just because you want them to flow. So I just take an eyedropper with some water. It's all water based paints. And you thin it out. And that way, when you go to paint this thing, it's going to give you the smoothest texture. You don't want you don't want any lines. So this is even that's even still I would say a little too thick. Go a little bit more, a couple more drops. And that, the dropper is nice because you can control it. If you need to mix up more, um, you kind of count how many drops you need. And hopefully, you don't need a whole lot. Like, you know, when you're picking a a plate or a play field, it's best to if you can get a game that's what I would call a good candidate. If you're planning to restore it, you know try to find something with the best quality that you can you can find obviously because then it's less work to touch it up if you get something that's all blown out I mean not that you can't touch it up it's just going to be a ton of ton of work so what I want to do here is I just want to put a little little dot right here right. if I can get in any closer to show you oh 
focus, focus. Can you still see it? Maybe. That's too far. Okay. That's pretty dang close. Ugh, that light was just in the way. I have to move my hand in front of it. Anyway, one one technique is so I use to look at my small screen here a little heat gun, right? Um, I think this also came from this is like just an embossing gun. Um, you don't need a lot, and what I like to do is I put my fingers around the spot where I just put that test paint, and then use the heat gun just to dry that little spot. I put my fingers there because I want to be able to feel the heat. Like you don't need to get right up to the, the spot. All you're trying to do is dry the paint. And the reason I'm doing that is um, wet paint versus dry paint, how it looks. Um, on the play field is way different. Okay, so now that that spot is dry, I'm gonna take my rag again and it's naphtha. You can you can kind of you can see that little dot. So that's the dull dot, right, of the the matte paint. I'm gonna take a little bit of naphtha on a rag. And then I'm going to wipe over the spot, and you should see that disappear. If you did it right. A little wet. That's... I'm going to have to move the camera so I can look a little bit better, but I think that's going to be it. That's better than my last one. Oh yeah, much, much better. Okay, I like it. So if that wasn't correct, it doesn't always work out straight out of the bottle. And so with that spot that I just did, you just press a little bit harder with your napper rag and you can take that up. No big deal. Okay, so if, if that wasn't a match. Focus again. Focus, focus. Okay. Um, the next thing that I would do, so you, you'd ask, is it is it too light? Is it too dark? Um, so you can always tint it with, you can either, if you want to, to brighten it up a bit or tint it, just add white or black. Um, very sparingly as you go. So what I like to do is um, on your on your paint tray, just put like a little dab of white or black, whichever way you're going to go, and then you just take your paintbrush and just dip uh, a little bit of that in there and just mix as you go. And then you're going to have like a gradient amount. Um, so you start on one end and you kind of, so if I was using black, it, it's going to tint really fast and you kind of move your way through the, the puddle of, of paint and then you have like, this will be darker red over here and then lighter red and then you can kind of use from that, um, I, I guess swatch of, of paint to see where you end up as far as, uh, darkness to it and then you know another thing to consider is if you remember back to 
I don't know, elementary school, um, your color wheel, right? So your primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And theoretically, you should be able to make any color in the color wheel out of those three colors, theoretically. So, which means that you can never make a red. You can never make, you can never make a red more red or a blue more blue or a yellow more yellow. So I, as you can imagine, I have the most of those colors in my art cart. Um, I probably have, you know, 20 different blues and 20 reds and 20 yellows. Um, I just basically, when it, whenever uh, like Joanne Fabrics or something is running a sale, I'll go and pick up a, a bunch of bottles of whatever and kind of I try to keep an inventory of what I have. But anyway. Okay, so let me, uh, I need to go back and paint the spots that I already painted red once. And so this color is not correct, so I'm going to take that out. I usually leave the bottle, whatever I was using, I'll leave it on the play field. So if I need to go back and mix up some more, I don't lose it. Where is, okay, all right, so I'm um, doing this spot right here, you know, I, I painted it and you can obviously see the red is a little bit different, not that this area is a huge, um, area of concern because this is where a post would go but it was down to bare wood and I thought well, I might as well paint it there would be a plastic over this too I know that some guys that touch up play fields, a lot of times they, they don't even bother with um, underneath the posts because typically you'll get like a wear spot around it or indention, but uh, if you're going to clear coat that, like uh, for example, <laughs> I'll show you another spot like like any of these post areas here. This is actually raised up, right? And so when you go to when you go to uh, clear coat this, which is, is probably a good rule, um, when you clear coat this, you're you're inevitably going to be wet sanding the whole play field, right? And this is actually a high spot. So you're gonna actually you're gonna be um, cutting through on that, and it's going to knock down the high spots on where your posts are, because like the the low spot would be where your post was uh, around the perimeter, but then your high spot is the where the screw went in. Anyway, um, so this will get knocked down to bare wood when you when you're wet sanding, and so probably doesn't make sense to um, to touch up those spots right away but if I was doing this like my method would be um, especially bigger areas I would um, you can mask this off and airbrush it like uh, for example I could do frisket paper around the whole thing and then I take a exacto knife and cut around the key lines and then I could spray that um, all uniform white. Um, so you would inevitably be painting it all, just you'd have to go back and paint those spots again. But again, under posts. So how much do you care?
All right, moving on. I had a spot over here that is not under post, more noticeable on this ship, right here. Is that focused good? This is the spot right there. Focus, focus. It's a little too bright. Okay. So these, the reason that the black looks different, because this was where there was a mylar um, half moon thing by the slingshot. So all this black that was touched up with um, just uh, black paint. That'll have to get sealed. So I need to do really just a red spot that I already did. And the nice thing about once you have the uh, the color matched. The objective is now to go through the entire play field and look at all the red and just touch up those spots. So in this case, I'm actually going to, um, because remember I was talking about there's a purple on top of this, so I'm going to do the red and then later when I match that purple, I'll need to go back and kind of paint some squiggly lines over top of this. With older paint, it you can kind of see. Let me uh, try to get even closer here. Get like right down on this thing. I need to get a camera that has some zoom. Okay, all those like kind of white spots in the red. That's paint that came up. My computer over here so I can see. So cute. Right. Yeah, so all those little spots. Come on. Focus. Where were I need to do all those. Boop, boop, boop. And one thing you can do, uh, you can just like wipe it away with your finger too to fill in those kind of crevices. There's a bunch of them. Already looking better.
I need to move the camera out of the way just a little bit. You kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. So I can see, I need to be able to see. And work with the camera right over it. it makes it harder. There, that's probably a better view anyway. So, all right. Try a little bit longer, a little bit more here. might be the, the most amount of red that I have to touch up. But luckily it's kind of random. Like, you know, none of it really needs to be uniform right here. It's just sort of this like, I don't know, uh, whatever space cloud of something or maybe it's an explosion I don't know but there's nothing you really have to follow in this pa uh, pattern per se when I get actually this this red here so this is actually the bottom of this spaceship so I'll have to go back through with some black and kind of define some of these lines but that's about it no big deal So, another thing I wanted to mention, I've seen that I have, I got, I got uh, new Dave's Arcade swag for the past, uh, I don't know, month or so. I've been working with a, an artist to create some cool original stuff that, uh, it's not, I didn't want just like a logo on a hat or a shirt. I wanted to have um, something unique. So uh, me and Ryan and uh, Mark from Mark Spaceman Arcade kind of, I, we came up with some ideas and, you know, bad things around that would be kind of, that would fit the theme of what Dave's Arcade is, like that look and that feel. Um, 
So if you want to check it out, uh, you are not, you don't need to buy anything. If you just want to check out and see what designs come up with, there's the link. And I set it so I do not make a dime on selling anything. So it's the lowest price that Stream Labs will, basically it's the cost of the garment or whatever the, the substrate is. So it's a mug or whatever. So basically, if you want it, great. <laughs> It, it kind of promotes the, the channel and I tried to make it as affordable as possible. But it's fun. I think I'm going to do Maybe do two more designs. I need to think about what else I would want. I want to try to incorporate something with lava lamps because I have a bunch of bunch of those in my uh, arcade room. Yeah, I think the, the designs turned out really nice. I had, I'm wearing the, the um, wizard shirt and then the hat is really the Days of Arcade logo. And then I got, I got an example of everything. So the other, other thing I got was a mug and then this one has the mad scientist art on it which is pretty cool so fun little project couple more spots here and then I can move on to more red areas. Lots of fine detail in this, which you're not going to be able to see all of it in on the camera. But I guess the nice thing is because it's because it's darker, you have a darker red and a, and black. It's you're maybe that's. One thing that's it's not uh, super noticeable because of how busy it is. Um, so you don't have to be super precise. I, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move. Can you see that spot? Yeah. A couple of spots up here. Mostly just planked, little planked lines. All right. Oh, 
e back him up a little bit. And I want to kind of scan through the play field and see what spots need a little bit of red. So I find it easier to kind of look, look in sections and kind of move through. The more thorough you are at this now, the less, you know, you're going to, as you go through, you're going to continually find spots that you missed and you're going to have to mix up the color again and it's better if you can try to get the majority of it in one pass. So I could have got some bigger spots of purple there. So when I go and match that, so that, that would actually be a good spot to match from. And then I can paint in those little squiggly lines. So I got a bunch of purple in here that needs to be fixed. Also, uh, when you go to paint, like especially if you're, you're kind of moving around, I use, I use my hand to kind of rest, right? I can't tell you how many times I've set it down in some paint. So just be aware of that as you move through. So that's why it's good to kind of work in sections. So I'm, I can paint this area and I move that way. Because if you move this way, you set your hand in the wet paint and then you cause little smudge marks that you have to clean off and fix. All right. already looking a lot better okay we got a bunch more red up here move you over that spot we can get in a little closer So I did paint a, a spot here already with that previous red, but it's just a it's like a spot where there was a wire form or post or something. This is a this is a shot up to this lock shot here, so we got a ball trail path. You can see where it kind of wore away little chips here and there. So as as a playfield planks and ages over time, um, you get sort of these 
high and low spots that you know your you have ink that goes onto the wood and then um, uh, you know they they put a coating of a gloss coating over over the ink and seal everything in but then as you have moisture and stuff in the in the air and as the play field ages it um, it's wood so the the grain can show itself and as that comes up it can crack through the the coating and the and the ink and creates a high spot and as your ball rolls over it um, over and over and over again it starts wearing at those spots so back in the 80s I they didn't really put much if anything as far as like a coating on it they had like a different mentality of uh, play field wear is what we have today you know not necessarily it was a it was a amusement equipment device right don't nobody had these in their home that I mean maybe super rich people or something but for the most part they were on location and they they were designed to to take quarters and provide amusement for a certain amount of time and so they only needed to last so long I'm sure they, they didn't even have that mentality like this is gonna be working for the next you know 30 40 years like they currently are so having a play field that lasted forever was not probably not in their their thinking their thought process some manufacturers did have that thinking I know the Yoda the burger thanks for the follow <clears throat> so yeah I think the um, I mean it's pretty prevalent on on American made games uh, so I have some Italian and Spanish games that they had more emphasis on having a, a more robust playfield coating and so they would they would last forever and they have they've their play fields look fantastic to this day and typically you just have to clean them up and polish them and that's it but uh, any of the Bally Williams Stern Gottlieb they all had a similar mentality this this game is supposed to last for you know whatever a couple of years and then it gets stale because new games come out people don't play them anymore and they you know as if you've been in pinball long enough you know that there are some operators that don't take care of their games keep them running so you get it just things start to not work and they they don't want to fix them well people are putting money into it so why would I bother fixing it well you know double-edged sword there maybe if it worked people would put money in it but you know but then new stuff comes out and people want to play that I don't know This game is very much 
Battlestar Galactica uh, knockoff. So it, you know, it's it's what's popular at the time. Star Wars is popular, and um, so there's lots of space themes and different titles that they try to capitalize what's 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 popular in, in or pop culture. Whatever they they could get you to put a quarter into the thing. Alright. I'm pretty happy with that. I do have to go back and do some black here in this spot. I'll do that later. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> Stamp is on the cord over there. All right. We got little spots here and there. They just need a little dab of paint. Well, you might ask, well, do you really need to do all this? Like, no. This, I mean, you really, you could just do a shop job and yeah, there's a few wear spots here and there, but it's gonna be, it's gonna play fine. I feel like I can make it look that much better by just doing just these few touch-ups, you know, around, even if you just, if all you did was touch up around the inserts, like, cause that's very common. You get insert where, if you just do that, just black, that goes a long way to making the play field look really nice. Oops. I already forgot a spot here. Some around this insert. Make sure you can see this spot. Nope. Right for the nope. Okay. That's where. Nope, see, I just did it. Didn't follow my own rule. So that was just a spot over here on this insert. Because I was moving this way, not away from. So just something to be cognizant of. <laughs> Getting closer. Be done with red. Kind of worked my way around the bottom play field. I still have the upper to go. Got. 
spot right here. Here, here. In a little corner here. Not too much on this side. It's like down below the flippers, you don't get much for play field wear because it just kind of rolls in the out lane. Moving on to the upper. Move this stuff out of the way. I have uh, quite a bit of red, I guess. Sorry for the camera movements here. I need to tighten up my gooseneck. Okay. Once this red, once I'm done with this, I can move on to, I can do, uh, do this aqua color and show you how I do that. Honestly, color matching is really, it's not that scary. If you, if you take your time you, and you have some patience, you'll, you'll find the right color that's going to make, make you happy with it. So Just got little flakes in here that I need to fill in. So you always start with the base color like I'm doing here. The red is the base and then there's a purple kind of squiggly over top. And that's probably all I'll really do. Like for this one, since it's so busy, I really, I don't really need to go through, unless it's like this spot here that I touched up was bigger. It was down to bare wood. Um, this one I might go through and just put a couple, 
do squiggly lines and stuff in there to make that busier so it blends in. Um, but you just look at the art around it and like what what's missing, what what do you need to fill in so it looks natural. I mean, all these all these lines are pretty pretty busy. There's it's not you're not following a exact contour, exact um, you know shapes to it. For example, if it was like if it was one of the the ships that has specific lines to it and geometry to it. That you'd have to follow along a little bit neater than that but this one you can kind of just sort of fudge it in there no one is going to notice the difference what they will notice is the the, the missing paint so like this spot here so that's that's very much noticeable. See all the little little flakes and little little spots where that ball trail was. So as I paint this in, that's all gonna disappear and I really don't need to pay too close attention to like you know not painting the the little purple squiggles. No one is going to notice that. Attack! <laughs> well, I didn't drink last night, so <laughs> my hands are, are steadier. Which, I feel like I played better. But, you know, there's no way I was catching Max's, uh, whatever it was, 3 million or... That's what seven seven digits. So yeah. Three million whatever it was. Crazy score. How are you doing, attack? Yeah, for sure. I need to make that game harder. Like I took out the outlane rubbers, but I was joking about it. Like I should take out the, the return wires. <laughs> that that would really make it hard. You know, and and as I I do um, I do uh, competitive pinball. Uh, occasionally but when you see like super duper good players it it certainly is discouraging you know if you're if you're just kind of starting out and you're trying to get better and you see somebody that's like a freaking beast of a player uh that's why I need to be like in a, a D division or E, something like that. I'm not gonna ever compete at the A tier.
So, as I said, this is just a post here. I don't need to go too crazy on it. But I, I am. I don't know. Whatever. Looks better, though. But see, now you don't notice the ball trail. Because that red was touched up. And I'll probably end up just this whole path here. I'll probably end up sealing. If it was like a really bad spot, like um, like for example, um, like this this is a kick out spot. So if you really wanted, where am I? Sorry, this is a kick out spot. So when you plunge the ball, um, it it kind of goes through this this hook ramp right here and then it it hits this spot every time so if you really wanted it to um, your touch-ups to last for a long time like say like I'm not clear coating this plate field I'm just I'm gonna touch it up and seal it with some polyurethane so I'll probably seal it with the polyurethane but it's probably not a bad idea to like I could cut you know a small square of um, a mylar and put it right in this spot and that would protect this because you can I can feel an indent where it's just kind of ground through um, so that's that's probably a good spot for that <sighs> yes basically attack yeah and in in the the really busy areas you could paint a, a happy tree or a bush of some kind um, you don't you know whatever you feel whatever you feel I don't know if uh, bushes are gonna or trees are gonna survive in space though I think they'll, they'll probably freeze up but I mean maybe there's a space bush right Whatever exists in your world. Hey, you know, in my space, <laughs> there are trees in space. That, that's the dimension that I live in, right? Oop, oop, oop. All right. What other reds? Got little bitty spots. Nothing too crazy. Really just the kick out spots. And then I can move on. Mm -hmm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think either way there'll be a popsicle. You know, it's it's funny attack when you like I've been watching some some space shows, right? Talking about the universe and and like how insignificant we are in the the whole timeline of of all time and I'm I'm convinced nothing really matters because um, we're just on another track to uh, a mass extinction event and eventually we're going to be replaced by whatever the next thing is in a thousand or a billion years from now and it's just crazy to think about like how how small we are but like you know the formation of planets and solar systems and I mean the fact that there's it's so big in expanse that there's like we know we know 
the, the, the most minute amount about everything. And there's definitely aliens out there and they're much smarter, I'm sure. But, and their they're, they're spaceships probably look nothing like this. This is like, uh, I don't know. Uh, hockey puck or pancake. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. It like you you just think about all the stuff we're tooling around doing, going to our jobs every day, you know, stressing out about money and just things that don't even really matter. It's crazy. You know, a a, a freaking uh solar flare could could kill us all in a second and we're worried about what uh, what the latest celebrity did or didn't do or it's crazy what what's the, the latest one is um Johnny Depp's trial or something like <laughs> I don't know. And then I also think about like, it makes me think of, um, you know, Rick and Morty and that show and how brilliant that is. Like there's alternate dimensions and time and, and infinite universes, infinite realities. It, I mean, it's enough to blow your mind. <laughs> Definitely need to be smoking something to watch that show. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe. Do I just go to Michael's for the art supplies we do order from special? No, I, yeah, Michael's, Join Fabrics, um, Hobby Lobby, just, I go to that paint section. I'll show you. Um, so this is my art cart. Focus this And whenever stuff is on sale, so I'll, I have like all these different reds, blues, yellows, whatever. And I always take like a little bit of paint um, from the bottle and then I'll smear it on the cap top so you, you can kind of use that as a baseline when you're looking at colors, um, trying to match. Because sometimes they put a sticker on there, but it's a printed sticker with, you know, the printer they used. It's not necessarily the paint in the bottle. But, yep. You don't need to get crazy paints. I know that some people do. They get super expensive stuff and airbrush everything. And, like, honestly, I can... I can touch up things with a brush much faster than I do have an airbrush and it works good in certain situations um, but you need to thin it out first you need to match it like I've already shown and or I'm gonna I'm gonna do with this this next color here um, you need to match it and then once it's matched you have to thin it out enough so that it will spray out of your airbrush and you have to mask everything off otherwise you're going to get uh, overspray on everything so it, it it really it does not make sense unless you're doing a bigger area so yeah for sure yeah the sanctum where Honestly, on so on shadow, it's it's gray, and gray is one of the hardest colors to match. And when I I painted a Bride of Pinbot um, playfield, and it's got a lot of gray on it as well. So what I did for that is I literally just, um, for example, if if this was the spot, sorry, I'm out of focus here. 
for example, if this was the spot and say this had like a bunch of of wear, I would mask off this this whole black spot. Like there might be like so this target spot fire when lit or this thousand here. What I would do is I would still leave this masked. Like I would just do the the main color areas. Um, so on on shadow it says like welcome to the sanctum I think right and black and then the rest is gray so in that case I would I would just make a rectangle around that sanctum piece if it was if it if it was still there or at least somewhat legible right and then I'd I'd airbrush or or paint the entire thing gray then I don't need to really match it per se I kind of get close and then then I go back through and I could um, paint in any wear spots in gray where the letters were and then I'd then I go back through with black and do the welcome to the sanctum spot so all right any more red last call for red I don't think so. Up there. Oh, one spot hiding. Ugh. All right. That sucks. <laughs> so this is probably going to get covered with the uh, plastic, but I want to just show this because it's crazy. Okay, so this is one where I probably just, if I was clear coating the play field, maybe I would do it. And I feel like in this circumstance, it might be um, like I could do a very small amount of red, but here's the situation on this. So, uh, this is the like a flame tail from the, the ship which doesn't make sense in space anyway because there's no oxygen so how the hell would you have a flame tail right but in this universe apparently there's fire and in all space movies right there's always explosions in space. That can't be right. Okay, so this particular one, the base color is white. And then the next color is yellow on the outsides. Kind of goes through this flame. And then on top of that, you now have a gradient red that goes over top of the whole thing and it gets like kind of thicker on the sides and then it thins out in the middle and it's a huge pain in the ass to try to get some of that stuff perfect so I'm pretty lucky that it's not terrible I have one other spot over here that I'll I'll show you but if that was if that was completely blown out that would be that would be difficult to touch up so um, what if there's just a couple of dots missing you can Put some of those back like so but you have to be careful in how big you make these dots so if you if you're in a spot where they're supposed to be small and you make them big it's going to stand out 
you kind of have to follow the grid pattern. There we go. So just a couple of strategically placed dots has already made that spot look a lot better. And I am not going to screw with it any more than that. Okay, there's one other spot here. It's not red. I mean, it's associated with it, but... Um, <laughs> Thanks, attack. Um, this one is a similar situation, um, but here's the base yellow. Uh, great, my light reflection is in the way. Okay, here we go. Similar situation, but I need to paint the yellow first. So I have a bare wood spot here. So it's okay because I didn't have to really tint the the red that I used, um, so that's fine. But I need to, there's not a whole lot of yellow on the play field. Anyway, I'll need to paint that yellow first and then I can add those couple of dots. But this is one circumstance where it, it doesn't make sense for me to paint the dots in now. I'll just do it later. Now, if this was, if that was all blown out, um, that whole flame area, which I had, or I had happened before with an alien star play field that I did, it had a similar kind of fading effect like that, and um, there's like four ships in a row that look like that had that and like one one and a half was like completely missing and so what I had to do with that rather than trying to paint all those little dots um, I ended up airbrushing it and doing a, a fade effect so um, like it, it was probably a little simpler flame than this is but essentially I masked off the area, I painted like the base color, and then I would um, I'd like spray yellow uh, heavier on the ends and then kind of leave like a light color or the light white in the middle and then um, let that dry and then I take the red and I just do like a mist over the very edges and kind of give it that flame look so on, on that particular play field there was I think it was just the one spot where they had that where in this play field there's you have them on the upper and then there's a couple down in the lower that have a flame tail so it, it might it'll probably look out of place if you if you do just one of them, I don't know. So I guess you have to make a judgment call. If you're, how bad do you want it to look symmetrical or look perfect? All right. I'm on to this aqua color all right so this one is a gradient fill as well <laughs> I need to find okay let me zoom in on this a little bit more so you can see probably just looks aqua at this point. Closer yet. 
So. Yeah. All right, now you can see it. Kind of. Looks a bit a bit different on camera anyway. But you you can kind of see the the dots that I'm working with. There's a better spot. You can see them up here more. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's this aqua color and then I have like a Yes, they're they're green dots over blue. That's what they are. So and it gets um Ugh yeah, this is like on the top. Sorry. There we go. On the top is more of a grid pattern. Um crosshatch, you know. And then as it moves down, it becomes less and then it becomes dots and then thinner and thinner and thinner dots towards the bottom. So my objective is I need to match the blue underneath first and then I can work on the green, which the green is probably, um, the green is going to be this green right here. So that would mean that the aqua I think is it the same? Yeah, okay. The aqua I think is going to be the same as what's in the the ship here. kind of messes with your eyes to look at one with it and without it what was that there was a trick like to take a uh, something and block it you know like a like a piece of paper with a hole in it I had one in here. Well, anyway, um, I'm quite sure that that's what's going on. So I need to match this, sorry, this blue is what I need to match. So I need to go to a spot that is not gradient. Oh, this spot right here. Yeah, at, at, and I gradient fill attack, they use that for, I mean, it, it gives you more depth and it it's, it's a way of um, uh, like shading. So, I mean, it's on this ship too. You got like heavier dots on this end, and then it fades to smaller dots over here to, you know, give you shadows. So I think that's what I'm going to do. In that case, this aqua, it looks pretty close but it might be a little bit too green. Here's a Langa, I don't know. Maybe this one, that could be it. That's a, put that in the maybe pile. Something a little bit more blue. Maybe 
turquoise. Let's see what this looks like. That might be too blue, too dark. Maybe I could lighten that. Still, maybe. What else? I think those are my closest candidates. Okay. Mark's Basement Arcade, how's it going? Doing a little kind of a bluish green color match here. So, back up a little bit. Focus. There we go. <laughs> Game Club, Club Central. How you doing? I think I could go. That might not be it. It might be a combination of this one and this one that has more green. That's what I'm going to do. These two. Uh, dang it. You see that okay? The color's not the greatest in the camera. But one's one's more aqua, one's more so turquoise and whatever this says. Dang it. It'd be helpful if you guys could read it, huh? There we go. So this is this is cheap paint. They have <laughs> you're crispy. Meaning you, you got sunburnt and I got turquoise here. So I think those maybe a combo of these two. All right, so on my paint palette here, <laughs> nice, you're good. All right, a little bit of blue, turquoise, and then I'll do a little bit of this. I don't know. Is it Laguna? Lagoon? Lagoon? Some sort of watercolor, I'm guessing. There we go. Alright. So, I'm going to do a straight, uh, straight color first. You're 10 miles away from the uh, league night tonight. Yeah, I'll have to, what time does that start? Seven? Something? Six? I forget. All right, I'm gonna do, sorry. Covered this earlier. Always want to thin out the paint just a little bit. Start with a dab of blue. And I really just want to, I'm just going to put right on the play field. And I can already see that that is too blue. But, Open at six. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll see if I can make that happen. For sure.
aqua so that it's somewhere in between let me get closer on both of these Okay, that's not good. So I'm gonna do maybe like a 50-50. So I'll move, kind of move these in to each other. Have something in the middle-ish. Kind of make a swatch of it. About there. So I know the, the blue and the thin straight is not going to work. So I'm going to wipe those off. Oh, I'm going to break my mug. Get closer here. Take this one out. I'm not using that. I think I need a little bit more blue. pretty close okay so now I take my heat gun put my fingers over it so you can feel the heat not trying to scorch the play field just drying the paint Now you take your rag with a little bit of naphtha. Try to get in a little closer so you can see. So this is the more blue and then the more aqua and I still need something a little darker okay so not that <laughs> I'm on the right track but it's it's not dark enough so back to my puddle here and do a little bit of black you only need a tiny tiny bit So, I mix this up a little bit with some water. 
wipe off the excess. I just need just a tiny bit. Mix that in to the blue that I had. Try that again. Oh. All right. That might. It's getting closer. Heat that back up. You see this spot? Right. Nope. I need to move the camera over. Right. There. Right. Theoretically, it should disappear when, as soon as you dry it. God, that's pretty dang close. Put a little bit more naps on here. too bright. A little bit more green. Okay. I'm getting there. more green. You were up till four last night. What the heck were you doing? Playing Roy Clark till 4 a.m.? YouTube shows. Oh. <laughs> well, I suppose your son was probably uh, sleeping when you got got back. I would. Well, you could just go back and watch this later if you need to put yourself to sleep. Watch Dave play Bob Ross on the play field. That'll put you to sleep. Dang it. Needs to be it's so close. 
needs to be a little what is that like a little darker just a little bit darker <sighs> so close <laughs> a Bob Ross wig. Yeah. I I think he's he he died, didn't he? I'm pretty sure Bob Ross is. He he was he was on like public television for a long time. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Oh, 95. Okay. You know what? That Maybe that's it, Mark. Maybe that's another t-shirt design idea. I have like a, um, some character with a Bob Ross wig or a afro painting something. <laughs> Yes, more shirts. <laughs> What's going on, Bartok? Yeah, it could be, uh, I don't know. Something to do with painting. Like, maybe I'm painting... I want something to do with... I, I want to incorporate something with a lava lamp, and maybe something with painting would be nice. Um, man, that is... That's pretty dang close here. Uh. Is it good enough? Is it good enough? Let me, let me, I need to back this up just a little bit. Dave with a poofy wig painting pinball machines on a canvas. Okay. Yeah. And then it's so close. What do I need here? I might just use it. It's it's right there. I think that's going to work. Be like one, one dab more of black. caricature okay so like a caricature of me 
with a Bob Ross Afro painting a pinball machine or something. I feel like it'd have to be uh, not a canvas, but a, a, it'd have to be like a play field or something. Maybe he could do something that it's like not yes. By the light of a lava lamp. Okay, okay, yeah, I I could see that. So like maybe me, um, Bob Ross here painting a play field with like a lava lamp, sort of the he could do like the lighting effect or the sort of. Have a light, you know, like the, um, like the mad scientist one. He's got like a headlamp, maybe shining on the play field or something. Be kind of cool. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. I think that's it. All right, paint it. Play field on an easel. Okay. Okay. Maybe. All right. So just so you can maybe see the color. Now it's sort of a mixture of the two and then darkened it up. So what I'm working with is this spot right here. But which I think what, you know, a thing I was thinking of was what if, what if the play field was not an exist? What if the, what if the play field was like a, it could be some sort of psychedelic type play field with lava lamps on the art that I was painting? Maybe? Could that be something? Like, uh, think of like a farfalla or something, or I don't know. Something that has lots of colors. Farfalla-esque, I mean. Um, so... It's still not focused great, but let me move my chair. Lava blobs on a play field. Yes, and painting the lamp. Okay. Well, I think I'll have to give them an example of a play field. Oh, what about, what's that Gottlieb game with the, with the roller skating? It's like roller derby. That's got a lot of bright, crazy colors on it. Like, who's to say you can't throw some lava lamps on there? Is that, is that one? Roller derby? I think that's what it's, or roller disco. Disco. Yeah. Ugh, come on, focus, you fucking. Right there. Yeah, maybe I'll get some some example pictures for the guy for roller disco. And like can you do something like that? Like painting 
at least that that feel to it. A little bit more water in this. Yeah. I guess the nice thing is it's it wasn't super expensive. I mean, relatively to have artist work on it so even if it doesn't turn out perfectly like you can always have them modify it or choose not to use it too so See this one? No, oh, that's in the light reflection. So I need to move this a bit so it's out of the light reflection. Let that dry. Hopefully it's okay. I didn't screw it up but I have to paint green so that's the the tricky thing all right board dog thanks for hanging out good luck with your remodeling work it sounds hopefully you're not uh, breaking your back doing it uh, so Yeah, I'll just go for it. Take the spots. goes around. Maybe I don't need to paint that piece. So that will be white. Here, so this is mostly green in this spot, but I'll fill in that little crack. Oops, there we go.
Alright. I need to do. Can I see. Nope. I need to back up. So you can see better. There we go. One spot. Or a couple spots over here. One right in here. Remember, this is just the base color, so I will go back through and paint over like the little green dots so it'll blend in more. So it looks a bit off right now, but it will. Um, that's what the gradient fill does, is it messes with your, with your eyes. Two more spots I need to do here and then up here. That's kind of in the light reflection. I'll do this lower spot first. Same thing with black lines, any key lines I'll paint over once this is dried. Dots of missing paint. You can always go back through and once the base color's on, I can I can do the the little green dots. So
So. <laughs> For those that are joining us, we're doing doing some color matching with the aqua. I am working on the base green. And you might not be able to see it very well on the camera, but this is a gradient filled um, spot here where it's got this kind of aqua blue color and then over top is a um, kind of a bright green dots and it kind of gives the uh, shading effect. But you have to paint the base color first Otherwise, it's not going to match. And then I can go back through and paint the little dots over top. I think I got this blue just about perfect. I want to paint all these spots before that dries so I don't have to go back and color match it again. Just refer to myself in the third person there joining us meaning me I'm the only one here I, I got a sleeping dog on the couch there he's pretty tuckered out so that could be us but, all right any other spots More blue, blue, blue. Okay, I think I got most of this area pretty well set. Now, move on to any other blue spot. Yes, us includes chat, for sure. I don't want to sound like uh, there's some podcasters out there like they, they keep saying like we like the royal we you know <laughs> so it reminds me of uh, uh, um, the Pink Lebowski he's like where do you want us to go it's like us it's like you, you know we as in the royal we <laughs> it's like I'm the, the fucking bag man it's like I'm not handling the money and talking to you on the phone and driving Uh, 
such a good movie. I got to play that a little bit more. Uh, friend Neo Skywalker has one in his collection. Got it not too long ago. Oh, for sure. It's worth... I've seen it several times now, but... <laughs> My favorite is... Where's the money, Lebowski? <laughs> he's, he's plunging him in the toilet. He's like, ah, it's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. Nihilist, I believe in nothing. All right, any other blue that I need to get to up here? And that already looks a heck of a lot better. It'll look even better once I do the green. Blue, blue, blue. I gotta move down. Moving down to the lower part of here. You've never seen the game in real life? Oh man. It's it's a pretty looking game. Um there's not I don't I don't feel like there's a ton it's very very much Valley William nineties Valley Williams rules. There's not a whole lot of super depth to it i mean you can certainly it the, the art and everything looks great but it, it certainly is homebrewy um so you know would i pay fifteen thousand dollars for it no i'll go play it at neo's but no people like it That was a whole shit show of uh, people getting screwed and waiting for their games and having them not come through and then they sold games that were already paid for and ugh, what a mess. I mean, there's already enough shit stains on pinball industry. And that one, and that's not even the worst of them, so. I think Deep Root will forever be like the worst. CCR in the current state. Cactus Canyon remake, right? Beautiful, fun, still too thin. Well, and then they, they have the promise of new code, which I think ultimately that was a smart business decision to say like, hey, we're, uh, I mean, same same boat as um the fathom remake uh like that's great that you're doing the the remake but the code in the existing cactus canyon was incomplete and i think they're going to run into the same thing if they do um Big Bang Bar, there's pretty shallow code in that. Honestly, I don't know why they even did Cactus Canyon, because not many people even know what it is, or have played one before. Um, I think they're banking on that rarity, 
and um, you know it, when you're going up against games that have a lot more depth people are naturally going to compare them what's available today for the same amount of money and you know go with what what their tastes are if if you're nostalgic for the 90s stuff then maybe that's for you but it's a beautiful game I, I mean I like the way it shoots but I don't know I think I would be I would be on if they did a Tales of the Arabian Nights that I think I could get behind which that would make more sense to me Tales of the Arabian Nights and I heard I heard that the the code was pretty far along with the uh, Lyman cheats, um, so they might just have to hire someone to, or have somebody on staff finish up, you know, any loose ends or whatever, and get it going. But yeah, for sure, I think, I mean, Toten, they think they made less of, so that might be more popular than Theater of Magic. But, oh, don't know it was your first machine ever? That's awesome. I fell in love with my, my second machine was Theater of Magic. And I, I mean, I fell in love with that game. And I think it was because of Pinball Arcade. Um, just that, the theme and the, like, you know, what the ball did and, it's just those are super fun games um but yeah i agree the 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 rules um there's there's not a whole lot to them not you know back when i owned them i wasn't the greatest player but i mean i could imagine if i got in front of one and played it over and over again i could probably get to the end um so but that's how most 90s games were. You could usually get to the end. They were they were designed for a location and they only did so much. So Okay. Mark, you've never played a Toten? Well, you need to you need to remedy that. Ugh. Man, my color my color is running a bit. The blue ran into it. Now I gotta correct it a little bit more. Well, yeah, you mean the just the the nineties games in general being more advanced compared to um well, I mean, as far as like progressing through the rules and different modes, um yeah. I mean, there's quite a few things. There's, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of different modes to play on it. So yeah, I guess I, I'd agree with that.
Like what what would be the the most um the most depth of a nineties game, like probably Twilight Zone or I mean, there's quite a few modes on that. I guess maybe when I think of depth, like, um, I don't know, like so many Twilight, Twilight Zone Sorcerer. Why would you say Sorcerer? That's that's even earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, nineties more advanced than eighties, yes. Sorcerer is like isn't that like eighty four or eighty uh that was an early solid state game. Yeah, Godzilla versus Twilight Zone, for sure. I mean, just like, I guess when I think of depth now, it rules today. The depth meaning, like, so many nuances to the rules, like stacking, um, or like, building up multipliers, and hitting these certain combo shots, and knowing, the, like, these little things throughout the game. Like you really need to study all of these little things to like maximize your scoring potential and it's it's insane. Hmm. Yeah. And I think um comparing with older games, I mean you had a limitations of memory. You know, you have a chips in the back box that are on the MPU can only hold so much so you're not it's not going to be you're not going to be able to pack in tons and tons of stuff so but today you have a computer in there with essentially infinite amount of stuff which I would say that the code doesn't even, the code probably doesn't even take up that much space. The vast majority of it is like all of your freaking animations and things that go on the screen. That's what takes the most amount of time now of the development is that damn screen. So I know that people like it but it is the number one thing that takes the most amount of time when developing a game. So think about like every single screen that you see, the animation, the motion of it. takes a long, long time for every single scene or transition. That's why Stern and Jersey Jack have like an army of people working on the screen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, getting getting the game to do what you want it to do for like you hit this switch, it scores these points and it plays this sound. That's nothing.
honestly, I can't keep track of like super in-depth nuances to rules. I am not going to pay attention to that stuff. It's just, I know that competitive people really like it, and if you're a designer and you are a competitive pinball player and you want to have all that stuff in there, like Keith Allen does, that's great, but I'm not going to pay attention to that stuff. It's just, there's enough, enough depth for me to just follow along in the basic rules. Okay, you're in a mode, you need to hit these shots, and that's it. Like, I am not gonna figure out hitting certain combo shots or multipliers. You want to, so you want, you just want a logo shirt? Small, small in front, large on back. Oh, I'm sure I can make that happen. Uh, <laughs> attack, you just flap, you flip the flappers and you make the lights blink. <laughs> You know, honestly, I feel like um, that's probably one of the big reasons that the 80s games are still very sought after today and why a lot of collectors end up um, uh, kind of settling there. Um, I remember listening to a good interview with Terry from Pinball Life, and he talked about the L the evolution of people's collections, right? So they, they start off and they want to get things in the A-list, you know, um, you know, something in the top 10 and, or something, you know, go after those. And so they, they, they spend the big money and they get the, the new games, the top 10 ones, and they enjoy those for a while. And then they start looking at well, what are some of the B titles and exploring more and more and then their evolution ends up settling somewhere in the 80s titles and maybe it's just that um, that good combination of not super um, complex rules they're they're usually ass kickers of a game they're short games um but it's it's that one more game feeling that that um competitive i mean they're great for competitive pinball because they're fast playing uh not a whole lot to think about hit these few shots and you know so, I kind of agree with that. It's basically what I did in my collecting journey. Not that I don't enjoy, you know, the, the modern games have lots to enjoy. And it, it is fun to get into some of the depth to it, but sometimes... I mean, it's fun just to have a game where, like we played last night with Sea Witch, just you want to hit the objective is hitting those few shots and doing the best you can. That's it. All right, that is looking better. I made some. We can move over here. 
two more blue spots. That one, that other side was worse than this one. Attack! Thank you for the bits. <laughs> Appreciate it. The section. Oh, the blue one. Yeah, I mean it's you start start filling in those little bits and Rainbow Pinball, thanks for the foul. Welcome. Well, since there's new people in here, I'll post it in here. So I, I talked about it last night on the um, on the Buffalo stream, but I realized that it's probably not good to you know talk about my own things on Buffalo, but I can do it here. So if you um, if you want to check it out, you're not it, you don't need to buy anything at all. But I. I just wanted to show you the cool art that we came up with uh, for some of my swag. So I make zero dollars on any of it. I put it the price as low as it would possibly go. So I just want people, if you want it, uh, it it's nothing is going to me. The little white spot where it says scoring, when that and that goes away. Oh, um, <laughs> yes. The where did I do the scoring one? You mean in here? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> where did my brush go? Here's a little white spot. Eep, eep, eep. See that one? Alright, now I have to go over here. You just got your space shuttle ramp. The miscellaneous parts. Nice. Who that is that Marco? Or Starship Fantasy? Or was it Rampomatic? Who that was a smaller ramp. Marco. Okay. Yeah, they they like to be the place that just has that one thing. There's one in seconds. Yes, I see it right. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. Mm -hmm. There we go. A little tedious to go through all these little spots, but yeah, it does look a lot better once it's done. My eyes are going to bug out when I go to do the green. <laughs> it's so close, like you can't see it very well on the camera, but it's like a brighter green. All these little dots. There we go. 
pretty dang good. Much gooder than it was. Uh, Drainbow, yeah. Um, it just depends on what I'm doing. Uh, so, it, I, it's sort of like a, a variety stream. So I, I do, I do touch ups on play fields fairly often. Um, so the extent of which just depends on, um, like how far I want to take it. Uh, I've done several play field restorations over the years and, um, different clear coat jobs and um, I've done one like so this one isn't going to get a clear coat this one will just be kind of sealing the touch-up areas and um, I've also done ones where you can touch up and then do a um, like a play field protector over it um, so there's there's many different ways that you can approach it um, other things I do on this stream, um, I'm going to be, oh, I'll show you. Uh, okay. Well, thanks for hanging out, for sure. Sometimes he gets drunk and plays <laughs> totally close to the heart. Yes. <laughs> for sure. Um. I wanted to show the, uh, let me tilt this up. I got this, oh, maybe you can't see it. It's pretty far away. Uh, I might have to go with the other camera, but I have my toot box over there and I got a sweet new, um, uh, neon light for it. So it says rock and roll. It looks like a 45 record. So I'll be, I did get a capacitor kit for the amplifier. So I need to tear into that and uh, replace some caps, uh, do some board work. Um, anything arcade related or pin, typically pinball related but it will be uh, anything in the arcade which would also include I want to talk about 3d printing and lava lamps I'm gonna <laughs> I, I 3d printed a lava lamp base um, or I designed like redesigned it. Let me move my camera again. It should be over here. Right there. Danny Joseph, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, the jukebox. The jukebox is a Rockola Capri Two. Um, I picked it up couple months ago now and I love it it plays 45s and it holds 50 records so 100 songs um, and I really wanted a jukebox that was visible jukebox where you had the glass where you can you see it pick up the record set it down and play it um so i think the, the people the ones that people know the most is probably like a wurlitzer bubbler those are probably the most popular um but rockola makes a very similar cabinet style like that this one's kind of more boxy more affordable But yeah, I can show you. I have 
Yeah. It'll be in the smaller screen, but I can move this over here. I'll show you it real quick. This is just my kind of seating area. Got my sleeping dog on the couch, being lazy. What slack did I got? There we go. So there's the new neon sign that I got. That's uh, purple, blue, and red. And then it's pretty cool. It's got you know the see-through window. And so pick up the record from the carousel and drop it down. And so, yeah, I really like it. It's a lot of fun. But, yeah, so my um, another friend that lives up north uh, for. Uh, it's actually a, a kind of duo is a pinball mayhem and um, yeah the doggos they're they they pretty much sleep all day <laughs> um, so pinball mayhem they're up in uh, Stevens Point area Wisconsin and they uh, mostly it's it's Ed Owens and uh, Jeremy Ajima. Ed uh, recently quit his job and is gone he's in the jukebox business now which they are they bought Victory Glass which was out of Des Moines Iowa and they're in the process of moving that business from Des Moines up to Appleton, Wisconsin. So they're kind of putting together that warehouse and moving all the inventory. And so basically they're going to be the, uh, uh, they're, they're trying to be like all things jukebox parts. So um, that'll be awesome to have that close by. And Honestly, I want to learn more about repairing them. Um, you know, looking at some of the guts inside of it, they're really not that much different than an old electrical mechanical pinball machine. Um, it's, I mean, you have electronics uh, that run like the amplifier and everything, but it's, uh, as long as you can get parts and repair the thing, um, for everything that I'm hearing about it, eh, being a repair tech for jukeboxes can be, um, can be a lucrative venture. So, um, from what Ed is telling me, if you can repair a jukebox, you can make about a hundred bucks an hour doing that and if you think of the market well comparing it to pinball jukeboxes are probably even more prevalent than pinball is I mean if you open up like Facebook marketplace or Craigslist and you just search that I bet you you'd find a ton of jukeboxes listed Because there's a whole lot of broken ones out there and not a lot of people that know how to fix them so yeah but I think much like much like pinball I think it's it's um, it's a generational thing right so um, Pinball has like the nostalgia of retro is cool and younger people are getting into it, but uh, I don't know if the, well, younger people are getting into vinyl. So that, that is true. 
they're 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 collecting vinyl records they're they're more into into that than they were i don't know previously i guess is there's there's something um tan what do you call it the tactile uh, instead of just hitting play on your on your mp3 player or your phone you have a real thing that plays music um so i feel like that could tie into that market <laughs> well yeah mark i mean you totally could get into jukebox repair too i think it's it's always good to learn it's something new so it might be something that I, I slowly learn here and there to fix them I don't know if I want to collect tons and tons of them but I at least want to be educated on maybe maybe it's something I'll I'll pick one up every now and then repair it sell it get another one repair it sell it something like that but at this point I don't know I don't know what I don't know and there are some that are more collectible than others so just being aware of what that market is what people want and um, so that I think that might be a good strategy is to repair some for myself take my time doing it before I I uh, offer up any services to to people to take on their their jukebox would be good <laughs> Your friend bought a warehouse, bought a new warehouse. He's putting a corner of side for stuff. Like what stuff? Just like for his his own personal stuff. I'm guessing you mean like gaming related because he just bought the new Rush pinball. Is he going to start like going crazy and buying a bunch of pinball now? <laughs> Any more blue? Got some right in here. Little bitty spots. Yep. Those look pretty good. Moving on. Up here, not a whole lot up here, just a few spots. He's talking about opening an arcade on my side of town. Hmm. Well, so yeah, he probably needs like a repair tech to go through make sure things are working on a periodic basis well I don't know in this area if it's enough um, people or enough population to support it but maybe 
depend, maybe it just depends on how much you advertise and you can get people to to travel for it. Um, I feel like he should talk to Gar at the Garcade and just just to get an idea of what he's getting into would make sense. No, you're right. I mean, there's a couple of bars here and there that have like a game or something, but that's about it. All right, well, I only have one other spot. <laughs> oh, I forgot to check the middle. Duh. One, here. Mm. I want to show you this crazy spot. Well, I already found a spot. A red. A red I missed. Oh my god. Ugh. Well, it's still, it's still, it's still good. Well, I don't know, Mark. I feel like uh, that'd be that'd be a lot of work for sure. Let me start smaller first. All right, this is the crazy spot. It's got these really, really small lines. Focus this way. We got that spot. I have to do this really sharp line. And then there's one other spot. But I mean it's mostly covered in, in a plastic. So anyway, what what I'm gonna do here. focus it further away so I can just talk about the, the technique <sighs> Go back okay so the technique on this I'm not going to use a brush I'm going to use an exacto blade Hey, but I want to show fine lines. This is a good example. Okay, so uh, what what I do is just put a little bit of paint on the knife. And then cut the line. Steady hand. You cut the line first and then put some paint on it. And I'll try my best. But you're right, it's covered with stuff, so not that big a deal. Ugh.
to go back through and <sighs> it's hard to get these lines. Yeah, they're thicker than I want. Ugh. Well, not the best job. I'll have to go back through with some white and get in here. It's not terrible though. Better than it was. All right. Holy moly. I've been going for three hours. <laughs> All right, I better call it quits on this uh, and go do some other things. It's, I got some yarn work to do and I'm pretty well set with the blue. So let me back it up and kind of see overall. I have to remember these are my blues. Keep that. This goes back. Clean off my brush. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was one red spot that I forgot. Or I missed. And I already have the red. Just get it done right here. See? Done. All right. So I think next stream, I just have to move through the colors because you got uh, yellow, so yellow, red, purple blue um green white black and i think that's it seven colors so it's all a combination of those seven colors that make up everything so I just really likely just need to match the purple, maybe a yellow, and oh, and the green. Purple, yellow, and green is all I really need to do. And then, I mean, there's just tiny little spots, like some yellow on the flames. Um, some you know i think the biggest one is probably going to be the purple so almost there getting very close all right let's look this up quick i want to pass you to somebody huh it's like they're streaming a tournament at Allentown. Oh, somebody's doing a pit fast walkthrough. That looks fun. All right, I'm going to pass it to that. It's like Lick Arcade. So. Um, does that work? Uh, well, maybe not. I don't think it's working. Well, whatever. All right. No big deal. All right, I'm going to end the stream here, and I don't know what I'm going to be doing next or when, maybe tomorrow. Uh, see how ambitious I feel, but thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you next time.